Today we're talking about trusting God. Has anybody on here ever had to trust God for something? Just nod your head. <laughs> nod your head if you have had to trust God for anything in your life. All right. So Psalm 56 3 says, When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. So when we're afraid, we put our trust in God. And we can trust him because he is faithful, he keeps his promises, and he is a solid rock that we can go to whenever we're afraid, whenever we're worried. Um, so we can trust him. Yeah. So Christian and Eliana, what does it mean to trust? What is trust? Like believe. Believe? Okay. Okay, Eliana said, believe that he's going to help you when you need help. Um, all right, so trust. So we have a glass of water, and I have an index card. And when we put our trust in God, we can trust him because he is faithful and he keeps his promises. Right? Mm -hmm. And we can also remember that what he's done, he's done it before. So he can do it again, right? Mm -hmm. So I have this index card on top of my glass, and this is going to be a picture of what trust is. Ah. <laughs> She's All right. So when we trust God, this is holding the water in on the cup. So this is trusting God. Pretty cool. All right. So I'll read the verse one more time. Okay. So just as a reminder, the verse is Psalm 56, 3. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. So that's what we do during this time when we're afraid. We can put our trust in God. And know that he will be faithful, just like he's always been in the past. That he will get us through this again. Amen. Lacey's waiting to be oh, where is she? I don't see her. Looking for Lacey. She said she's waiting to get in. Hmm. Okay. All right. We are going to enter our time of communion. And... Um, if she can try to enter again, and I'll keep an eye out for it. All right, as we do communion, um, I wanted to use this board to show you something. Uh, first of all, and you're unmuted, so you can, you can comment if you want. Um, what is the worst kind of pain that you've ever experienced? The worst kind of pain? Brokenness. Okay, mm -hmm. so like emotional pain, brokenness. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. What else? Worst kind of pain. I'm going to say when I had to have my appendix out, that, that hurt pretty bad. I didn't like that feeling. <laughs> yeah, knee replacement. Knee replacement? Oh, yeah. I've heard those are painful. I've heard when your knee hurts really bad. My dad, if he were here, he would say his knees in the past. When they put a, a tube in my lung, Back in 1995, I thought I was dying. Oh, man, tube in your lung? Well, I had a, a bypass oh. building up in my lungs, and uh, they had to get it out of there, and that was tough. Back oh, wow. Wow, okay. Yeah, that sounds pretty painful. <laughs> um, have any of you ever experienced excruciating pain? Truly excruciating pain? Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to show you the origin of the word excruciating. Okay. Excruciating. Okay, we have excruciating. Is it backwards? Is it showing up backwards to you? No. No, okay, it's good. All right, cool. So notice how the word cruciating looks a lot like crucifixion. Mm -hmm. The word X means out of. So it literally means out of the cross. So get this, guys. 
when when crucifixion was invented it was a whole new level of pain it was a whole new level of pain that they had never experienced before and it was so painful they invented a new word for it excruciating out of the cross jesus experienced the worst kind of pain we can imagine that they had to invent a new word for i mean that's that's pretty significant isn't it yes um he experienced the worst kind of pain that they had to come up with a new word for that level of pain and i just want to meditate on that this morning that jesus voluntarily put himself through the worst kind of pain that was known in that world at that time and i'd be willing to bet it's still one of the worst kinds of pain you know i i can't think of a, a anything that might be more painful than crucifixion can you um, and he voluntarily did that why so that we could be forgiven of our sins and be made right with god and that was the only way guys was there had to be a perfect lamb sacrifice and jesus is the only one who was perfect uh, that that he could be the perfect sacrifice on the cross for our sins um, all of us have sinned we, we none of us could be the perfect sacrifice none of you on the video could have been the perfect sacrifice because we've all sinned right but Jesus never sinned he's the only one who ever walked the earth that never sinned and so he was willing to go through that pain is anybody thankful this morning he voluntarily was willing to go through that pain for us absolutely Amen. okay so let's just meditate on that let's really think about that you know vision envision it in your head jesus going through that pain they're, they're nailing the the spikes through his hands they're nailing the spikes these huge spikes through his ankles um, and then they they thrust the spear into his side to make sure that he was dead um, but he had to hang there uh, and he had to pull himself up and pu you you know, push push himself work. off the ankles just so that he could breathe just to take a breath he had to do that every so often and just was just so painful but he wanted us to be made right with god and have the opportunity to have our sins forgiven so uh, that's what we remember during communion time so uh, hopefully if you have a cracker uh, we can go ahead and, and eat the cracker and just remember Jesus' body. Let's do that now. This one's got the less. And if you don't have a cracker or juice, that's okay. Just, just sit there and just think about what Jesus did for us. Um, hopefully, maybe you have at least a cracker. Maybe you didn't have grape juice at your house, and that's okay but maybe hopefully you have at least uh, a cracker that we can eat and remember Jesus body okay and then we're going to drink the juice to remember Jesus blood that he gave for us Okay. Anybody want to just say uh, thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. <laughs> Today's Palm Sunday, too. It is. Yep. It this is, is the day he came into the city. Yep, which it's amazing that, um, you know, a week before he, he rose from the dead, they were all singing his praises and saying, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And yay god saves they were all happy happy for jesus when he was going through the city on that donkey and then just a few days later that same crowd is yelling out for him to be crucified yeah which is kind of wild kind of crazy isn't it yeah um but uh we're easy to change our minds <laughs> yeah unfortunately people are uh, inconsistent all right for this next part, um, we're going to go into our, our lesson time, and I want to ask everybody, so uh, the lesson is things we can do 
during the coronavirus, and this is not just the things that you might read on a Facebook list, like make sure you wash your hands, wear a mask if you go out. This is stuff from the Bible of what, what we should be doing from the Bible uh, during the coronavirus. So the first thing I want everybody to do is clasp your hands like this. Put your, do interlocking fingers, clasp your, your fingers together. Okay, now pay attention to which finger is on the top. Is your right finger on the top? Yeah. Or is your left finger on the top? All right, my left. Which one? Okay, so it's different. So now what I want you to do is switch the other way. How do you do put, If you had your right finger on the top, put your left finger. <laughs> Does that, does that feel weird? Yeah. <laughs> does that feel really weird to anybody else? Yes. <laughs> so we live in weird times right now. As uncomfortable as this feels, um, we, we live in uncomfortable, weird times right now, don't we? Yes. <laughs> Things are really, really strange. So I want to ask everybody, if you're in this room or on the video, what, what has been the, the weirdest thing to you? or the most difficult thing for you during this time? The weirdest thing or the most difficult thing during this time? Anybody? No human contact. Yeah, yeah. the distance. Hard. Okay. Still can't see my daughter. Yeah. I worry no. about my family, my children. Grandchildren. Mine's Mine's the unknown, not knowing what's going to happen to the world, not knowing what's going to happen to our lives from here on out. Yes. Uh, was, is it, has it been weird being trying to find toilet paper at the stores and not being? No. I hate it. Um, it's been weird, hasn't it? Like going to the store and all I could find was a half gallon of milk instead of a full gallon. Like, it's just weird, strange times. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and mute everybody and then I'll unmute when I ask a question. Okay, so um, we're living in weird times. We're, we're kind of how, homebound, aren't we? We're homebound and, and it feels, it could feel like we're in captivity. It could feel like we're, we're almost in a prison almost, like we're just locked in. And a long time ago, the Israelites were taken captive into captivity into a foreign land. And they were taken into Babylon. It was around 700 AD, so before Jesus. They were taken into captivity. Like whole, the whole nation of people were taken as prisoners and had to go live in a foreign land in Babylon. They were taken to live other places too, but we'll focus on Babylon. And in, and in Psalm 137, it says, because they were in captivity, not in their homeland, and they couldn't be anywhere around the temple, okay? You have to realize for Jewish people before Jesus, worship was all centered around the temple. Everything happened at the temple. And so in their minds, we're not able to be in our hometown. We're not able to be at the temple. And so we just can't even worship. And it says they hung their harps up on willow trees. In other words, we can't sing. We can't be at the temple. We're just not going to sing. We're going to hang up our harps in willow trees, which is ironic because uh, what's the nickname for willow trees? They're weeping willows, right? So they were sad. We can't worship. We're not in our hometown. We're sad. So we're going to hang up our harps and just call it quits and hang them up on the willow trees. In other words, they just gave up. They just said, well, can't be at the temple. We're just going to give up, not even going to worship. What is going to be our response? We're in a time right now where we can't meet in our public worship space, right? Are we going to be like the Israelites who hung up their harps and just gave up, defeated, and was like, well, just can't sing to God, just can't worship? Or are we going to be like the Apostle Paul did when he got locked up in jail in Acts chapter 16? So that's where we're going to go. We're going to be in Acts chapter 16, and we're going to talk about how are we going to react during our corona captivity, I'm calling it. <laughs> how are we? What's going to be our response in the middle of this corona captivity 
Uh, are we going to let it get us down? Are we going to be defeated? Or are we going to overcome? And are we going to stay positive and, and all that good stuff? So in Acts chapter 16, a little background to the story. Um, Paul was going around doing missionary work. He was telling people about Jesus. And he came to this one town where this slave girl who was demon-possessed, she had an evil spirit living inside her, was following him around. And this slave girl could predict the future. She was a fortune teller because of the evil spirit that was inside her. She could tell the future. Uh, and, they, and the slave girl made her owners a lot of money by her being able to tell the future. Well, <laughs> Paul got aggravated at this, this slave girl, actually the demon, who kept talking, talking, talking in his ear and said, that's enough. In the name of Jesus, I command you, come out of her. Well, then the girl lost the ability to, to tell the future, which made her owners really angry because Paul just lost them a lot of money, right? And so long story short, they, they have him flogged and thrown in jail. They got mad and, and convinced the authorities to throw him in jail and flog him. So here he is locked up. Uh, what is going to be his response? Acts 16, verse 25. It says, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. That was their response. We're going to pray and we're going to sing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Notice that. That's something we're going to come back to. The other prisoners were listening to them praying and singing hymns. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once all the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. He assumed that the doors are open, they must have all left. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? <laughs> He's like, obviously, you know the real God. Tell me how to be saved. They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him. So they continued to explain the gospel, the good news about how Jesus saves. They explained the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his family were baptized. So how soon was this guy baptized? Immediately, like that same night, right? That's important. Uh, he didn't wait weeks and weeks or a year or several years he was baptized. He and his household were baptized that night. All right. Uh, the jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. That's a cool story, isn't it? So we're in a kind of captivity. And the first point I want to make today is during our corona captivity, don't stop singing. Don't stop singing. Uh, and that's why I passed that video on to you of, of Christian when he was a toddler singing that VeggieTales song. Because I wanted to play it right here, but it wasn't working. I, I tested it out to play it on, through Zoom. And Andrea was on the other side of the house. And she said, no, it's not coming through. It's not working. So I just sent it out to you ahead of time. Hopefully you got to watch it. But our favorite part was when his voice, when he got a frog in his throat in the middle of singing, he said, it's not working. <laughs> My voice is not working. It was pretty cute. Pretty darn cute, if you ask me. But don't stop singing. Don't let Satan steal your joy. Amen. Amen. Don't let Satan steal our joy. So there's a movement right now of this thing called Praise on Your Porch. Praise on Your Porch. It's a Facebook group, and it's people who are going out on their porch during this captivity, this homebound, and they're going out on their porch, and they're videoing themselves singing songs. And most of the people I've seen are singing Christian songs. They're singing praise songs, and it's really cool, and we're, we're getting to see all these people singing these songs out on their porch. Um, 
uh, some of the most beautiful singing I ever heard was when I was in China on a mission trip and we were doing house church. We were in this apartment and in their very broken English, they were singing the song, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. And it's all about how this world is not our home, but heaven is our home. We are, our citizenship is in heaven. And it was so beautiful to hear these, these Christians, these Chinese Christians who could come in and have the police come in and arrest them just for worshiping God and take them into prison camps. And, and they're singing, reminding themselves, you know what, if that happens, if we get arrested, that's okay, because this world is not our home anyway. Yeah. Heaven is our true home. And it was beautiful. It was beautiful to hear them sing that song. It was awesome. So uh, another point about this, and then I'm going to open it up. I'm going to ask a question. But uh, another point I want to make is notice how singing can be a witness to others. It can serve as a Christian witness. Remember, I pointed out that as Paul and Silas were singing hymns, who was listening? The other prisoners. Remember that? The other prisoners were listening to them, and they were witnessing through their singing to these other prisoners. And I, you just know that those other prisoners had to think to themselves, how can these guys be singing at a time like this? Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, we're locked up, we're in jail, and they're singing happy songs to God? And it had to be a witness of, like, man, these guys have something that I don't, right? They must have something that I don't have. And we know it served as a witness because when the jailer, when, when he saw that none of them had left, what was his question? He automatically asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? He knew, I need to get right with God. Their praying and their singing led this jailer and his whole family to turn to God. And so our singing, if we want to do praise on the porch or whatever, our, our singing can be a witness to, to who we have living on the inside. Amen? Amen. So, um, kids, I want to ask you, what is your uh, favorite songs? Any, any kids that are listening that can talk, that are old enough to talk, <laughs> uh, what are some of your favorite songs? What's one of your favorite songs? Any song? Mm -hmm. Unstoppable God? That's a good one. Okay. Are we looking at Kendall or Rondell there? Hi, Lacey. Hi. Is that Rondell? Hi. Yeah. Hey, Rondell. You're, you're in on this too. What's one of your favorite songs? Anybody? It can be any song. It doesn't have to be a Christian song. Just any. Uh, I don't really have a favorite. I just like them all. Okay. Does anybody have uh, It's Randy Tacos? It's, it's raining tacos. tacos. Whoa. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> thank the Lord. Everything, on is my soul. Awesome. everything is cool when you're part of a team. Okay. Um, Jeremy, thank the Lord, oh my soul. Thank the Lord, oh my soul. Amen. 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 Just as I am. When we all get to heaven, what when we all get to heaven. Be. Amen. Yes. Amen. What, what do you think, this is to anybody, why do you think singing is so powerful? What's so powerful about singing? Words. <laughs> okay, so the, the words, the lyrics are powerful. Content, the content of the song. Uh, Sam, excuse me, Jeremy, turn your speaker off, and then we can't hear all the noise background. Here I got, uh, well. That's not nice She's muted. Yep. Okay. okay. So, um, what, what else? So Christian said it makes you happy. What, what is it about singing that's so powerful? So the lyrics, the words, um, the mood that it puts you in. Mm -hmm. What else? It comes from within. Comes from within. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. It makes you feel good. When I sing the Lord, the different songs around here, I feel the Holy Spirit moving in me. I feel a tremble. Yeah. Or, yes. I don't want to tremble. Or, just a wonderful feeling. Like um, 
I, I feel God and I do that all all day long, Frank knows. <laughs> I'm singing short little songs, you know, that I learned as a child. I haven't forgotten. She's getting good. I love it. That's awesome. Christian music is my escape. Yeah. It's like a way for me to get away from everything and just tune in to his music and his words and his promises. Amen. Yeah. I can't sing, but I listen to a lot of the songs, a lot of Christian songs. Yeah. A lot of Lady, the I can't sing either, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. I don't want to, I don't want Philip to have to close his ears. <laughs> Jesus yeah, loves Singing it. is powerful, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, there's one place in the Bible where it says that God inhabits the praise of his people. She, she, she still in other words, he comes and dwells in. Kathy reminded me of that. Uh, he comes, something happens. He comes and dwells uh, almost inside those praises. Something powerful happens when we sing praises to God. That's why I sent you what I sent you, because it would be awesome to go sit in a big parking lot in our cars, six feet away from each other, and praise him through song. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that was very cool. I love that. That was, that was very cool. I think um, is. Okay, guys, what's one thing you can do this week to incorporate some singing into your life? And, and we can piggyback off of what Tina said. If, if you don't feel like you're the greatest singer, maybe you can at least play some Christian music, right? Oh, Just yeah. what can you do? What's one thing that you can do to incorporate singing, uh, Christian singing, into your life this week? Jeremy, I just called Dottie in the nursing home, uh -huh. and we read the entrance of Jesus into... Uh, Jerusalem on the mm -hmm. donkey mm -hmm. and I'm going to call her back after we've already planned this I'm going to call mm -hmm. her back afterwards and I'm going to put Christian music on for her so she can hear because she's really isolated yeah you that's know she's great. really great idea. Idea. and Play Terry and I were her. singing today we put it on our bows that's and we, perfect. we were singing today I sounded good too <laughs> 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 awesome. All right, guys, I'm going to mute us again and then make point number two. So while we're in this Christian captivity, don't stop singing. And then the next one comes out of Acts chapter nine. All these are in the book of Acts today. Acts chapter nine, verse 36. Acts chapter nine, verse 36. <clears throat> and we're going to read about somebody who had a really unfortunate name. Her name, she had two different names in two different languages. One of them was Dorcas. Man, that's just unfortunate that one of her names was Dorcas. <laughs> Sorry, trying to make a bad, bad joke right there. Okay, uh, verse 36. In Joppa, there was a disciple. That's a, a name for a follower of Jesus. There was a disciple named Tabitha which when translated is Dorcas, who was always doing good and helping the poor. Man, wouldn't you love to have that reputation? That you are known as someone who is always doing good and helping the poor. I want that to be known of me. I do. That's my goal in life. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lida was near Joppa, so when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. So apparently that was how she served the poor. She made clothes for people. That's pretty awesome. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called the believers and the widows and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. So what do you think this point's going to be? Using Tabitha as an example of someone who is always doing good and helping the poor during this corona captivity, don't stop serving. Don't stop serving. They all start with S today. Don't stop serving. 
I've had some really funny moments when I was serving other people. Uh, I used to go to this assisted living with this lady who played the piano and she would play the piano and I would lead singing for these, these people in the assisted living. And then I would give a short devotion, a five minute devotion for them. Um, usually using the material I had used on Sunday for my sermon. I would just shorten it for them. But I went in there and there was this lady named Mary Kay. And I actually don't know if that was her real name. Uh, she just wore, wore the same Mary Kay sweatshirt all the time. So I called her Mary Kay. Uh, and, and she was normally a very friendly person. But some of you know this, that people with Alzheimer's or dementia can sometimes turn mean. And she was normally very, very sweet. And I'd always say, hey, Mary Kay, how are you doing? Well, on this particular day, I said, hey, Mary Kay, how are you doing? Uh, I just really uh, care about you. And she got this mean look on her face and she goes, you lie like a dog. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> oh, have mercy. Okay, she's not having a good day today. <laughs> um, one time we were at church camp and we bust the kids from church camp into the local town uh, and we were gonna, we went out and did all these serving projects. And some of us uh, went into this church building in a nearby town, I won't name the name of it, uh, but we went into this church building to clean it and just make it nicer for the people. And, and as I was walking down the hallway, no lie, I saw three cockroaches dart behind this picture frame on the wall to hide. <laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness. Um, if you read a book on church growth, I think rule number one is how to grow a church is don't have cockroaches in your church building. <laughs> it was just, wow. Uh, so funny things happen when you go out to serve people. <laughs> but um, we are called to serve as Christians. Mark 10, 45 says that Jesus, Jesus spoke and he said, the son of man, for even the son of man, he was talking about himself. That was one way he referred to himself. He said, for even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So Jesus, the king of heaven, the king of universe, came down to, to earth, became a baby, became a human, and, and then he grew up, and he didn't take a, a physical throne. He didn't, he didn't take over and sit on a physical throne and say, okay, now everybody serve me. All right, everybody, my servants, come feed me grapes and, and, and fan me with with palm fronds, with, with palm leaves, you know, fan me and keep me cool and, and feed me grapes. Jesus didn't say, serve me, serve me, because I'm the king. Instead, he didn't come to be served, but he came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus was a servant, even though he's king. Okay, he's a servant leader. Uh, Matthew 25, we, Jesus told a parable, and he made it very clear that we are supposed to feed the hungry and take care of the thirsty and, and the people who need clothes. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick and in prison, or in prison, and you visited me, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus made it clear we're supposed to take care of the sick and the hungry and the needy right? That's one of the things. It, we follow in the footsteps of Jesus, who was a servant, and he wants us to serve as his followers. So serving does, doesn't cease during a virus outbreak. There are still people in need. In fact, I would say that the need has become even greater during this outbreak, right? We've got all these people that we prayed for earlier that have lost their jobs. We are going to have a serious rise of people that are going to have needs that, that have not had needs before because they've been laid off. So the, if anything, the need has gotten even greater during this situation. And so the need for the, the opportunity for Christians to step up and show the love of Jesus and show the light of Jesus uh, has increased. Um, so uh, I know we have a stay at home order. And I understand that the governor wants us to stay at home, but he did say that essential things are still okay. So if it's a necessity, and he specifically mentioned food, that people still need food. People, there are still hungry people and they need served food. And so at least our family is gonna continue to serve. We're gonna still be careful. We're not gonna be foolish. We're not gonna do stupid things and put ourselves at risk, but we're gonna be careful, but we're gonna still take food to people. Uh, who are in need. And so if you're worried about that, put on a mask, wear gloves, 
come home and do like my friend Ryan, who when he goes out and does ministry during these times, he comes home and he immediately takes all his clothes off, washes them in hot water, like boiling hot water, and, and he takes a shower immediately. He does nurse protocol, he says, uh, like just like nurses when they come home from serving at the hospital. He washes everything immediately. But if you're not okay with that, there's, there's other ways you can serve. Um, there's creative ways. We just got to get creative. Like I love the idea of uh, the, the, the people who are uh, putting snacks out for the Amazon delivery drivers, right? They're still out having to drive. So they're making up these snack boxes and they're saying, here, take one of these as the people deliver. And they're putting little cards, you know, God bless you and Jesus loves you. And, you know, so you can still do things without even leaving the house, right? There, if you get creative, you can still serve and show the light of Jesus if you really just don't want to get out of the house. Um, you can take and drop food off and just drop it at the door and don't, as long as you don't have any human contact, you know, uh, just get creative though. Be smart, but guys, we still have to serve as Christians and, and God calls us to serve those who are in need. Um, uh, we've posted it and put it out there, you know, private message us if you're in need and you need food. Private message us and let us know and we'll get you some food. Guys, as soon as this thing lifts, as soon as this stay at home order lifts, we're gonna go out and we're gonna collect basic needs. We're gonna do a basic needs drive because I guarantee you what's happening right now is people are running low on toiletries. You know, toilet paper and, and, and deodorant and toothpaste and toothbrushes. And so as soon as this thing lifts, I want us to go out as a church and collect basic needs and then give them out to people uh, who have lost their jobs and who are gonna need those kinds of things. We're gonna do that as soon as this thing lifts. Okay, yeah. so um, kids, what can you do uh, to serve during this time? What's something you could do for mom or dad that would make them really happy? <laughs> you like how I threw that in there and for my own kids? <laughs> What's something you could do for mom or dad around the house that you could serve them that would make them really happy? What do you think? Ooh, do your jobs, your chores without anybody asking. Yes, your, your parents would be ecstatic if you did that. <laughs> what else? I know one thing this girl does is she makes her daddy coffee, which just makes my heart very happy. <laughs> um, so you can serve. Even, even within your house, you can get creative, right? Um, guys, I'm asking everybody, what is your, uh, what's the thing, what's the type of serving that brings you the most joy? Anyone? Serving the older people. Hmm. Yes. Okay, so helping the elderly? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Who we're else? calling platinum people at our properties, which is 55 and over seeing mm -hmm. if they need anything. So that's what we're doing, what Castor is doing right now. Cool. That's great. What kind of serving brings you the most joy? Someone else. Words of encouragement when I talk to people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Some people are still hurting when they're stuck at home, but they're all older like Frank and I. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it seems like they're more scared, um, worried, should I say, yeah. about this virus because they're saying we're more since we're in our 70s and 80s, uh, we're more apt to catch something, and especially with the previous problems that, you know, health problems that have been in our lives. Um, it's scary, so when we give words of encouragement to others, um, I talk to someone, two, at least two people every day, and just tell them, you know, just keep the faith. Keep your eyes on the Lord and believe. You gotta, you know, you gotta believe. Yeah. It's yes. hard times, but yeah. Words of encouraging words that's good amen if you guys know of anybody in nursing homes that you know i love to call them i just love i mean that's all i can do right now you know i talk to Dottie at least once every day sometimes more and i love to read scriptures for them mm -hmm. Dottie loves that and if there's anybody that you guys know that i can help back home i mean a phone goes everywhere mm -hmm. yeah. That's a great ministry. That's a great ministry. I love it. Yeah. I think there's a lot of, like Kathy was saying, we can encourage people. I think we can pray for people and mm. 
um, you know, basically just see a need, fill a need. You know, we were able to help bring food to a few different families this week and um, through the church. And um, we tried to pray with those families whenever we bring the food and, you know, just check in on them and how are you doing during this time and what can we pr be praying about? And yesterday we met up with a family that Angel knows um, pretty well, and she asked us to be praying about her oldest son that is currently in a uh, recovery program. Uh, and, you know, people have needs, and they need to be encouraged, and they need to know that we care. And so even just praying for people, calling people and saying, hey, we're willing to help you. Yeah. With you. Uh, can I tell you what we did yet? What I did yesterday? Terry doesn't even know I did this. I went. I go riding on my bike because I have to get out of here sometime just to relieve the stress. Um, <clears throat> and I met three ladies, and one was on one side of the street. I was down the street, and the other one was on the other side of the street. And we stood there and all prayed together. Oh, cool! Awesome! I mean, <laughs> it's just amazing how many Christians come out mm -hmm. of their. You know, it's amazing how many people come out and want to praise God. And I'll tell you. We just have to be there to help them, you know, to, to right. initiate it for God. Yep. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so during the corona captivity, don't stop singing. Don't stop serving. Keep looking for ways to serve. And then this last one is in Acts chapter 17. Acts 17. I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody again. Acts chapter 17 and verse... 22 it says Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said men of Athens I see that in every way you are very religious for as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship I even found an altar with this inscription to an unknown God now what you worship as something unknown I am going to proclaim to you. I love that he, he did that. That was a great twist. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about this unknown God. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. From one man he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live. Here's the key verse. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the, the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by man's design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, to turn from their ways and to live for him. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to all men by raising him from the dead. So what do you think this last point is going to be? During the corona captivity, don't stop singing. Don't stop serving. Don't stop seeking God. Don't stop seeking God. Uh, Andrea and I watched this movie that we hadn't seen in years recently called Jerry Maguire. And... Uh, there's this part where Jerry is uh, dating or start soon to be dating this girl and they're in this elevator and this other couple's in the elevator and he does sign language and signs something to her and well this girlfriend his Jerry's girlfriend knows sign language and and she goes I know what he just said well what did he say you complete me and they're like oh you complete me that's so sweet right so uh, then they get married Jerry and his girlfriend get married then they go through this really rocky patch in their marriage where they think it's going to be over. 
Well, then Jerry has this wake up call and he's going to go back and reclaim his marriage. And he goes back and he, he gives this speech and he goes, hello, I want to tell you some things. And, and he gives this speech. And in the middle of the speech, he goes, you complete me. And, and, and she goes, oh, shut up. You had me at hello. Come here. And then they start kissing in front of these, all of these other women. And, and it's, and I'm looking at this and I'm like, oh, give me a break. I'm rolling my eyes. I'm like, ah, this is so cheesy. <laughs> Gag me. And Andrea is over there blubbering like a baby with tissues. No, I'm just kidding. I just made that part up. <laughs> I made that part up. She doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't cry like that in movies. Actually, I cry more at movies than she does. <laughs> you want to know the truth. But anyway, guys, that's what I call a fake Hollywood relationship like you guys do know the movies are not real <laughs> they're not real and the, those moments like that just really don't happen much in reality but I'm going to contrast that to our relationship with God okay contrasted to fake Hollywood relationships our relationship with God is very much real it is very much a real relationship and he has already reached out to us through his word, through the Bible, through Jesus. He has reached out to us in lots of different ways. And he's saying, I want a relationship with you. Then it's up to us if we want to seek the relationship with him. It's a two-way thing. He's already reached out. Do you want to reach out to him? That's the question. Well, during this corona captivity, uh, like it or not, we have a lot more time on our hands, don't we? Uh, we have a lot more time on our hands. Um, you know, basketball, sports events have been shut down. Entertainment events have been shut down. You can't go see a concert right now. Kids activities, you can't go to Little League games. You can't go to this kids activity, that kids act. Like, it's all been shut down. And so my point is we now have no excuse, really, to not develop our relationship with God deeper. We really, all excuses have been taken away. All those other things that, that can be a distraction are gone. And, and we can seek God out uh, in, in our solitude. And really cool things can happen in that solitude. When we, um, like the times me and Andrea have gone out to a cabin and gotten away from the noise of life and we were seeking God, he has blessed us many, many times. And we've had some really awesome, cool moments um, the, the most recent one, we, uh, this lady let us borrow a cabin and we made a fire out in the fire pit in the backyard and we're out in nature and there's no noise of life. It's just nature and trees. And we sang some praise songs. We sang some songs to God. We read some scriptures, we prayed. And at one point I just teared up. I mean, I just, I, I was just looking at nature and looking at the trees and I'm like, God, you are amazing you are awesome. And, and I just, I, I just had tears. Like God is so real. And, and it was like, I could taste him. I could feel him. I could like, like Kathy was talking about earlier, you know, she just, she would just feel God uh, during those praises. And when we reach out and we seek God, he blesses us and he rewards us. In fact, the scriptures say that Hebrews eleven six says that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The key word is diligently. If you diligently seek God, he will reward you, he will bless you, and he will reveal himself to you. That's the truth for today. Amen. So, um, what tips do you have about spending time with God? Um, anything about seeking God? Do you have any tips about what are some ways, tips you would give to someone else who is seeking God and how to deepen your relationship with God? Do you have any tips on studying the Word, studying the Bible? Do you have any tips on prayer? Go. Frank, you have one? No, I was scratching my head. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> who has some tips for, for seeking God? I read the Bible ever since we've been going through this nonsense that our world is in. Mm -hmm. I have been reading the Bible every day. I actually have been watching that live stream thing on YouTube, which 
You know, it's not perfect, but they're trying. I think it's really neat. Yeah. And I mean, I just read what I feel I need to read. Like right now I'm reading the Gospels, but it's easier to read the Bible when you have something going on within yourself mm -hmm. that you're like, okay, my anxiety's high. Let me go find in the Bible where it talks about this. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it can get better. That's the easiest way to read the Bible is through whatever you're going through. That's what you you should focus on reading the Bible. That's good. Whatever you're going through at that moment, struggle, pain, happiness, whatever, it's all there. Mm -hmm. That's yep. the easiest way to get through the Bible. I and, would and it's become it's become. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, Angel. Oh, didn't mean to cut you off there. And it's, it's become so easy with technology to search, just search Bible verses on anxiety or Bible verses on uh, whatever, any, whatever the topic. Um, and, it, and, and you'll have three websites, right? They come right up at the top that will give you all the verses in the Bible on that. It's just become so easy to look things up now in the Bible. Dear, Jeremy, Go ahead. I've got a notebook that I do, and I've done this for a long time, but now I'm doing it on faith not not i have faith but i have it's hard sometimes when you're sitting by yourself and you don't have your christian friends around mm -hmm. and you're going through a really really tough time to keep that faith yes the devil the devil seems to get in there a lot and when i get when i get to the point where i feel like i'm not doing the right thing i read those verses mm -hmm. and i've got like i think i've got three notebook pages of faith verses i've also got some on prayer I mean, I just, anything, any subject I like, I sit, and I read it, but I take the verses and write them down so I can go back. I've got a book that I've had probably for seven years, and Terry and I go through it a lot because it's just different verses, right. like depending on God and loving God and doing for others. I mean, like I said, the verses are just, I wish I could memorize them, but I could never remember them. <laughs> so I just keep reading them. There you go. <laughs> That's good. Thanks, Jeannie. Who else? Any tips for seeking God? Frank? Frank and I, every, every day before we start our long day ahead, we sit down, we hold hands, and I usually do the praying. He adds to it in places. And uh, we just pray about everything. That's mm -hmm. right. It might look like we're doing the same thing every day, every day, every day, but we twist it around, and but we manage to get all those things in and add things to it and pray for different people that we've just heard about and uh, just praying about everything. Yeah, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. that book? Right. Can you see that book? That's mm -hmm. Joyce Myers. <laughs> Every day. My time with God. She gives us something. <laughs> Inspiration gets us going every yeah. day. Some of the things she's went through. She tells us all of her life stories, and it's really interesting. It's Joyce Myers, uh, B Y E R. And, yeah, he, she's an evangelist. I mean, we, mm -hmm. I will Joyce Meyer. And yeah. Catherine, I've got one too. It's Mind Over Mind Over Manner. It's by Joyce Myers. No, I've read it through. It's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. It teaches you so how to get your mind on God. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 what about the cookies? She's got one now. It's called the cookies. Oh, I've seen that one. Cookies and do some. But anyway, it's just everything she says is positive, and that's what you need to hear about God. Positive, not all the bad things, but encouragement. You know. Yeah. Right. I can't wait until uh, you ladies get started doing the D groups. Those of you who are doing that, because it's gonna get you in the word like like you've never done before. Probably, I'm I'm guessing. But it's just going to, and then there, there's power of groups studying the same thing together, you know, being on the same page. And it's, uh, we're, we, we just finished Exodus, the, the men did. And uh, there are things that we, me and my dad, who have been to Christian Bible college seminary, forgot were in the Bible. <laughs> I'll give you yeah. one example. Um, because of the movie Charlton Heston, The Ten Commandments, we have this picture in our head that it was only Moses who went up on the mountain mm -hmm. to meet with God, right? Yeah. Joshua, his aide, was right there with him, it says. And we were like, what? Is that? Mm -hmm. Let's read that again. Are you sure? <laughs> so just, I love the phrase Robbie Gallaty says, get in the word until the word gets into you. 
get in the right. word until the word gets into you. Yes. So, all right, let's, uh, we'll close it up real quick here. Um, so whether you're, if you're, if you're not a Christian yet and you're seeking God and you're saying, I want to know more about God, our church has a program where we take people through a four week study. We meet with someone once a week, which we can do online. We can actually do this right here, a Zoom video call. We meet with you once a week for four weeks and we just go over how to become a Christian. And, and how to start your relationship with God. And so if you're not a Christian yet and you're, you're curious, uh, we would love to do that study with you. If you are a Christian, I want you to be thinking about what something you can do this week to not stop singing, don't stop serving, don't stop seeking God. How are you going to sing or bring music into your life this week? How are you going to serve? How are you going to serve someone else in need? And then how are you going to seek God? How are you going to spend some time seeking him this week? Does everybody have at least one thing in your head? One thing where you can sing, serve, or seek. Okay? All right. So just reach out to us if you want to do that Bible study. Um, we're going to have a time of praise right now. And um, I'm, I'm actually going to share... I'm going to read this scripture, and we're going to do like we did last week. We're going to read this psalm, and you all should be, some. most of you should be familiar with this psalm. It's the 23rd psalm. Mm -hmm. We're going to read this scripture, and it's going to say lots of things about God. What I want you to do is just pick one, one or two things out of that that you want to praise God for. And so you can just start off. It's, it's a prayer time is what we're doing. We're, we're praying together. But we're just saying, God, I praise you for X, Y, Z, whatever, whatever thing that you want to praise God out of that psalm about. Okay? Does that make sense to everybody? Yep. Okay. All right, let me get to that screen. Okay. Everybody still hear me? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Uh -oh. Oh, I'll read on here. Is it okay? Okay, here we go. <clears throat> so I'm going to read it, and then as you feel led, just just start praising God for whatever you want to praise Him about out of this psalm. The Lord is my shepherd; okay. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. Praise God. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Praise for God. You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Praise God. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Yes. Praise Surely you. goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. Yes. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. God, I just I just praise you for that last part that I I have confidence that I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm going to be with you. Praise you, Lord. I just thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for guiding me in your righteousness, for your namesake. Mm -hmm. I praise you for that. Yes. I praise you for being my shepherd. Mm -hmm. I praise him for letting me get up every day and mm -hmm. start out. And it's wonderful to be able to put your foot on the floor and say you're alive and ready to go for another day. Amen. Amen. I praise him for taking away my fear. Mm -hmm. I used to have a lot of fear about things. And now I know there's no reason to fear evil. Amen. I praise you for walking through all the darkness with us. Yes. Yes, with us. Thank you. Thank you for walking with us. Dad, I praise you that you give us everything that we need. 
that you have always been faithful to us in this way. Mm -hmm. I thank you that you renew our strength and that you keep us on the right path. Yes. yes. God, we thank you, especially now that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death and live in such uncertain times, that we don't have to fear, um, and that you anoint our head with oil and our cup overfloweth, God. Yes. And I praise you for the fact that there will be something better than this later. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So much better. Yes. Can't even imagine how much better. Hmm. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being our shepherd. Yes, you provide for our needs. God has provided for our needs. Uh, it says, I shall not be in want. I, know, I like a, the way another... Um, translation says, I, I will lack nothing. Yes. And I will lack no good thing, I think is how it says. And our family has lacked no good thing over these past, what is it, two months, three months now that we, I started this other business and we still haven't had any income yet. We're praying that this, this week I'm going to land a client, but we have lacked no good thing. We have lacked for nothing. That's awesome. God has provided for us. He's been so good. And we're, we're trusting him, and he has come through. So, God. Yes, he is good. And it says, he is my shepherd. He's going he's gonna to give us everything we need. Yeah. He's going to take care of us. That's what shepherds do. He gives me everything I need. The kids' version says, he gives me everything I need. Mm -hmm. God is good. <laughs> yes, he yeah, is. Yeah. All the time. And all the time. God is good. God is <laughs> great. Right. Um, we're going to, the last thing we're going to do, actually, I'm just going to mention uh, offering. So, you know, uh, we, how many, so we took food to two different people yesterday, right? Yep. Two different people yesterday out of our church funds. Um, there was, there was another one. I, I think we helped three people this week out of our church funds. And so, you know, this thing about we give, we give 10% of everything that we take in back out to the community. Um, we're still doing that. Amen. Still yeah. doing that. And we're going to keep doing that because the needs are just going to keep coming. You know, they are. Yeah. And uh, it was really cool how God uh, put, put us together with someone that Tina knew. Um, and that was, I just, I just love when God works things out and, and I'll just tell you this real quick. So we helped one girl last week. We were going to, uh, I checked in on her Friday and I said, Hey, how are you doing on your food now? She said, well, actually we're getting kind of low. I said, okay, we'll bring you some more. So then Saturday I said, when can we meet up? Uh, she said, well, my boyfriend or whoever, somebody just got his paycheck we're doing okay, go ahead and give that food to someone else who has a greater need. And so, um, so then like within an hour, Tina called me or contacted me and said, hey, I've got somebody else uh, in need. And so it was just cool. God worked it out and, you know, took care of the one and then right. provided somebody else within an hour of each other mm -hmm. and said, all right, here's, here's another one. Go take food to them. So... Yep, and actually, and I was talking to Angel at the same time, so sometimes we're not always communicating, and we're communicating with different people at the same time, <laughs> so Jeremy was talking to Tina, and was like, yeah, we can help this family, and then I was talking to Angel with somebody that she knows, and I, I told Angel, I said, well, we'll just help both, <laughs> so there you go, God provides. <laughs> so there's three ways to give, there's, uh, you can give a check or, or cash, to my parents' physical address, 5071 Holbrook. You can mail it to their address, 5071 Holbrook, uh, and, and they'll get it in the bank. Or uh, you can give through the PayPal link, which is on our impact page or 
family or probably both. Anyways, so we can make sure that there's a post in there somewhere <laughs> about PayPal, but we're still doing ministry. So 